RCA is now making thousands of radios at various factories in the United States at this time. Now, this is roughly 1929, okay? And they say to Lev, we want to make radio music. Since your device works in the same capacity as a radio does by receiving radio waves being transmitted uh, from a location, your device transmits radio waves and it's interrupted by your body being in involved around the antennas. It's like the opposite effect, but it's the same thing. We want to see if you can make your instrument for the masses. So he got to work with schematics and proposals. They said, fine, we're going to make 500 of these theremins as a test run. And if it works out, we're going to have thousands of these. So RCA starts putting out posters, kind of like these that you see here. And some of them might read, if you can sing, hum, or whistle a tune, you, you could just as easily play a theremin in your home. <laughs> Balderdash, OK? <laughs> OK, so the theremin is now being sold in various radio shops and music stores. And people take them home, unpack them. Oh, yep. Yeah, before they could leave the store, the salesman says, oh, if you're going to buy one of these, you have to buy tubes, special RCA tubes, because it's an RCA device. Oh, by the way, um, you see this here? You need a speaker, a special RCA speaker in a cabinet to play with your theremin. OK, for that time, that money cost about 675 Let's round it off to $700 for the complete gizmo, OK? Um, that's the equivalent of about buying a new Ford car back then, or about seven, eight thousand dollars today. So only the rich could afford to play, play it. And that's the other uh, crux of the problem. How do you play it? Um, nobody really knew. They'd go back to the radio store or the music shops. <laughs> I sold it to you, bucko. You heard about it? I don't know either. Uh, quality, con quality control is another issue. So RCA was pounding out hundreds of these. Uh, and each one was maybe tweaked a little differently. So the tubes didn't maybe match up right, or the tuning wasn't quite right uh, on these big coils that are inside here. Well, I guess now's a good time to show you. Oh, wow. Let me show you something else, folks. Those of you that are too young to know what a radio tube is, yeah. or a tube that might have been in a television, now I'm going to press down on these buttons that are interlocks prevent people from getting electrocuted. It'll take a few moments, but you may see some of these tubes start to glow, like little incandescent radio um, light bulbs. These are radio tubes that are used for amplification and stimulation of electronic magnetic radiation so that you can create music through the air. In reverse of a radio, which receives it, this is transmitting out a signal that allows you to play music, make music rather than play music. OK? These coils here are finer than a human hair. And these had to be repaired. This unit was found as junk, OK, at a swap meet. And I'm going to tell you more about it through this gentleman behind me, or behind you over here. This is John Woodward. He's going to stand up, and he's going to tell you about Woody. Unless you want to stay there. It's up to you. All right. It's named Woody, and he'll tell you why. Not because it's made, well, OK, you can say because it's made out of wood, too. And it weighs a ton, let me tell you. This must be 65, 70 pounds. Right. That one over there, without that fancy case that I made for it, weighs maybe two, three pounds. It's solid state, made by Moog Music. And generationally, this is 1929 when I purchased this. And they're still making these, by the way. Which is, you'll see when you come up, the little box that's inside here. Excuse me. Um, this one weighs maybe a pound and a half. It's just a lightweight wooden box with a circuit board and the two antennas. Everything solid state. Now they make them solid state, but with uh, the ability to have um, uh, MIDI out as well as uh, control circuitry, so you can put it through, process it through a computer and digitize everything. And da da da. This is the next generation of this. And John here, John Woodward, is going to tell you the story of how Woody got here today.